Hey guys, it's John P. I'm Gally Lewis. And this is a special edition of Geek Me Live. We're going to give you the world's first look <gasps> at VisiWig. All right, welcome back. Busy wig. Busy wig. Is that something like a Wizzy wig editor? It is a little bit, only it's better than ah. that. Actually, it's the newest version of a piece of software we showed you previously. We have our friend Michael from i4 Software joining hey us. Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm really good. It's beautiful here in sunny Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome that we can do shows like this, and it doesn't really matter where anybody is. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's what I'm telling you. So last that, time, last time you were here in the, you actually came to yeah. Dallas. You were hanging out with us here in the studio, and we were showing off video camera, which was which, an iOS app, an amazing iOS app that lets us kind of use multiple iOS devices as cameras and switch. switch back and forth. It's like the TriCaster, but on an iOS device. Yeah, it's like portable. And so now you have a new version. Tell us about the changes and what's up with it. OK, well, the most exciting thing is the existing version of video camera that was live until yesterday, the new version came out today, uh, only supported the, you know, the iPhone 4, 4S, 3GS. Um, it wasn't, uh, wasn't native for iPhone 5, and it was not supported on the iPad at all. Uh, there was a point in time, a way back, where you could run it in, in 2x mode on the iPad, yeah. but Apple got rid of that, and so people just couldn't even use it on their iPads uh, of any kind. And so the new version does provide full native iPad UI. We take advantage of the larger screen. Um, we also have optimized it for iPhone 5, which is great. Uh, the biggest change, however, when I came to visit with you guys, we showed off multi-camera recording, but all we were doing, we were recording multiple cameras at the same time, uh, but then those clips were being dropped into the timeline in sequential order. Right. They weren't, uh, we weren't doing live switching of any kind. So it was it's great for like a, a skateboard trick where you want to watch the same moment three or four times from different angles. But it's not optimal for, say, news reporting or for, you know, a birthday party where you just want to switch cameras. So what you're saying, let's pretend for a moment that we had four or five friends at a party. And everybody's walking around with their iPhones or iPads or <laughs> iPad minis or whatever, uh, iPod Touch. Mm -hmm. They're all walking around with them and they're using VisiWig as a video recorder. They are independently recording. But you're saying in addition to their independent recordings, you can live, you can have one of these machines kind of grab a, a live feed and kind of cut and everything and then at the end export that as its own video independent of all the other recordings taking place? Yeah, so what, what actually happens is the one of the devices says, hey, I'm going to be the the switching master, or I'm going to be the stage. And the other device is Sam, I'm going to be player. You know, I, I still want to have these clips on my phone, but I'm going to let you uh, capture them as well. And so the stage gets to, as they're recording, they get to switch between cameras, just like they might in a control booth for a, a you know, National Football League game or a Major League Baseball game or CNN, right? Yeah. They get to switch between cameras, and whenever they're done recording, each, each camera transfers the footage over. Uh, the live switch edits are maintained, and then now they've got a multi-camera clip on their device, uh, and that can be shared with, with the others if they want it to. Uh, but, but ultimately, it just makes it a lot faster to make a, a multi-camera video production. I mean, so we've got a we've got a live feed coming out of your iPhone mm -hmm. there, and we can see it. Uh, Dave, can you? Yeah, there you go. So we're looking at it now, I guess. Um, there's some little. So what are the buttons that we're seeing? Some little characters are are skating, and you've got you've got what what on the screen there? Well, let's take a look at this. So um, now we're transferring the clips from each device. Now remember, we're transferring the entire clip, whether we switch to it for just part of the time or 
or just a little bit, um, and everything is being transferred over to my device, and it's going to drop a multi-clip into my timeline. Um, so right so now it's taking... able to see that working. I was just double tapping on the thumbnails to do the live switching. Uh, and you'll, you'll actually be able to see the, the clip here real quick. Hold on. So it's taking all of those clips that you were switching back and forth and it's kind of combining them into the one right now? Yes. Okay. It's creating a multi-camera clip uh, that's editable. Now you can preview it and start editing it and doing all that yes. good stuff. So okay. I'll hit play and you can preview the multi-camera clip. Nice. And how much, how much editing on the back end can we do if we want? Like a trim? Yeah, you can, you can add titling and things like that too, right? Yes. Uh, you can do a trim. You can do a split. Um, you can duplicate clips. Uh, here you can see the actual finished clip. You, as you see, I'm, I'm actually switching between cameras there pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so would it, would it be uh, accurate to say that we would benefit from using uh, kind of the fastest iOS device as the stage well, device so that it could handle all the cutting and right. rendering and stuff uh, the quickest and use our slower devices as cameras? You know what, I, I, I don't think so. And I'll tell you why, because we've actually made this app to work with an iPad one being the stage. To my knowledge, it's the only video editing app that works on an iPad one and wow. works well. Uh, the screen I'm showing you right now is the edit switching. So you can see the original three camera angles and, and I can actually re-switch this now. So in, in post, you're, you're changing which camera we were looking at when we were switching it live. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, the that's, only other... That's very powerful. You know, Dave is sitting over here using a $50,000 right. TriCaster, and that's the only piece of equipment we have in the studio that will do that. Right. Wow. So people could be very creative using this. A produ big productions like we are could... Uh, minimize some of their our efforts uh, we in take, certain ways. We could take four or five I, like new mm -hmm. iPads with us to an event, and yeah. we could shoot the whole thing. And Dave could stand back there and control it, and send the camera guys over. Yeah. Clip counter at the top of the screen, you get the full edit view. And so here's our our movie I've been building so far. That clip that you see, you can see it's a multi-camera clip because it has a little square up in the upper right of the window. It says NDNLLS, which is non-destructive, non-linear life switching. Um, we can move that clip around. We can trim each clip of this real fast. Um, we can preview any clip here. Um, you'll see I even I did a quick trim. Then I'll do a quick split. That's awesome. At any time, at any time, I can hit the resume button. Uh, there's a resume button up in the upper right of the screen, and when I hit that, I actually go back to my main preview. If I want to start capturing some more footage. Oh, so you could be like, "Oh, we forgot to do this one little transition piece." You don't have to start all over. You go back. You take one of your cameras. You film it, and then you cut it into there. Yeah, and like in this I case, like I wanted to grab a little Ken Burns effect photo uh -huh. of my characters. And I, so I just hit that little camera button. It takes a photo, asks me what kind of effect I want. And then it renders it out, does a nice little zoom out effect on that photo. And then we'll preview that by just tapping down in that bottom timeline. Uh, now let's say I wanted that clip to come first. There's some arrows at the top of the preview window uh, where I just hit those arrows. Uh, you see those arrows up at the top of the preview window. I can just hit, start tapping those arrows, and I can move that clip back in my timeline. Um, one question people are asking is how they can find the app. 
Um, and so, <laughs> and what, how to spell it? Yeah, yeah we can um, put that on the screen. What we what we actually uh, did earlier was we did a search for VizzyWig, V I Z Z Y W I G, video camera. You do a search for that, and you should find it on the App Store. Yeah. Um, and this just came out like hours ago, so yeah. go find it, and we'll we'll oh Paul. Paul if put a link the on the IRC chat. Uh, or, yeah. Somebody copy it to the other chat rooms for everybody, okay? Um, so that's how you can find it. And then the second question somebody asked was, uh, did Michael develop this software himself? Uh, Actually, you have a whole team of developers yeah. over there, and you've got a lot of different apps as well. Yes, we, we have, uh, there was eight developers and three designers that spent the last 12 months on this version. So that's it's amazing. a very wow. significant, complex app. Uh, the main reason for that is to be able to do full iPhone 5 and iPad support, to be able to support all the way back to iOS 4.3, even on iPhone 3GS and on iPad 1. There was a lot of work in making sure that front camera and back camera uh, compatibility when using multi-camera across 16 different iOS devices doesn't cause any, any crazy problems. Uh, and Ultimately, it was just a lot of making sure that this doesn't doesn't crash. We don't want it, even when it, even if it ever should crash, you'll never lose your footage. Uh, we have a very robust database backing this. Everything is stored safely and securely. Uh, Free Jack in the chat room said this just brought professional editing to the palm of your hand, which yeah. is exactly right. And it's twenty bucks, I think. And it's twenty, right? Twenty bucks. Yeah, it's twenty dollars. Yeah. And, you know, I was going to show you real quick on our on our. Um, when you go to do your finishing, we have some really nice features for uh, controlling when your background music starts, whether you want it to loop or not. Uh, but we also allow you to do um, uh, audio paste. So some people have different apps that they, that they create original music or voiceover backgrounds mixed with original music. And they can uh, copy that to their clipboard in the apps that support audio copy. And then within, uh, within video camera, they can bring that audio in under audio paste. And if I recall, we could upload our own little video intro that like we use for our own website, right? Our like own save videos. It, save it on your device. Save it on your device. And you can pull and in pre-prepared yeah, clips. That's yeah, awesome. let me show you how, how load clip works now. So this is really nice. This is something that I think your users are gonna really love. Uh, the previous version of video camera only allowed you to pull in one photo or one video clip at a time. And we found that a lot of people were, were wanting to load 10 or 15 videos in order. And so we, um, we gave them this new feature that's called multi-clip. Uh, and they can actually tap the order that they want clips to be imported in. Oh, good. Uh, so you just number them in the order that you want. And um, That's awesome. That is. Bruce? And then when you hit the load media button, they get dropped into your timeline just like anything else. Hmm. Um, one question uh, that recurred a few times is, are they only making it for iOS or is it also for Android? This is an iOS app, guys. Yeah. It's hard enough just to <laughs> make this work across, as Michael was saying, 16 different variants of hardware yeah. with you know all the different um, uh, uh, OS versions as well to try and support every version of Android is going to be pretty darn complex. Ooh, yeah. So I think if you if you are interested in, in using this for kind of professional use, you could probably justify buying a few iOS devices. Even like these little iPad minis are pretty cheap now. Or the you know? iPod Touch that you're using over there. Or, you know? yeah, the iPod Touch. You can buy, you can yeah. buy cheap iOS devices and you could shoot with four or five of them. What we are working on, and we already had it pretty much mastered, is... We have a player for, for Android. So if you have a, a single iOS device that can act as your stage, then you can have multiple Android devices once we release this VisiWig player. Uh, and you'll be able to let those be you know, multiple remote cameras. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can use one. That. We're already doing it. And, and now you, know, you just won't have the full stage and editing capabilities on your Android device, but your Android device will be able to join the party. It can at least serve as a camera and you can and you switch it with your iOS device. Yeah. That's awesome. That is cool. So I just, you know, uh, I just took a few clips. I'm going to just pick some background music real quick. 
Yep. Okay, we so see you picking yeah. the uh, background music there. And now it's on the titles and credits. Fonts and colors. Wow. It even chooses recent, so you have your favorites, essentially, things you use the most oh, often. Oh, yeah, you can put your credits in. And then you process it. And so if you choose to process it later, uh, it would just sit in the background until you hit that process button? It actually stores it in your library as a session. And one of the really great features of, of this new version is we have a, a passcode lock in your session. So if you're working on something that's um, in progress, you don't want anyone to pick up your phone and see it. It might be confidential, it might be private. Uh, we do let you put in a pin code lock for any session that's in your library. That's cool. Uh, and, and then you can unlock it and then you tap on it and you tap resume, you can go right back to it. You can have six or seven projects going on at the same time and, and uh, lock some of them, keep some of them unlocked and then export. What I, the reason we implemented this is because I was at Disneyland with my family and I made three or four movies and my phone died uh, by, the, by the middle of the day because I was exporting all the videos and it was doing all the processing. So like this, I was able to just, I was able to work on four different movies, uh, save them for later. And then when I was able to plug in, I, I did the final export and, and uh, sharing to YouTube or Facebook or email. Cool. So it looks like your export finished and now you can share, share it immediately to or wherever play. you want. Yeah. Let me ask you, I've got one last question and then we need to wrap it up uh, pretty soon. But okay. uh, so we've seen that we can use a lot of different cameras. Actually, I, I have two questions. We've seen we can use a lot of different cameras. Number one, is there a physical limitation to the number? If we had 20 uh, uh, cameras, could yeah. we switch between all 20 of them? Uh, we currently allow 16. Okay, 16. Okay. That's still a lot. Okay. Uh, I don't think anybody's going up to 16. I have a lot of devices, and I, I can't ever get 16 together. Yeah. That would be awesome, though. I want to try that. That would be a very concerted effort. <laughs> that would be awesome. We should try that. Okay, that's now, so, question so number... Really, yeah, something that's really exciting is we're, we're introducing also today with this build something called Worldwide Remote Camera. And now it's a limited exclusive beta, and you have to sign up if you want to participate. Um, but what this allows you to do, the current version, as we have gone over it, only allows you to connect these uh, devices over Wi-Fi. Right. But let's say that you want to connect with someone across the world, and you want to build a movie together, or several people across the world. Well, we've worked really hard on our worldwide remote camera server. It's a service and sort of a social network that uh, allows you to um, basically connect with cameras over 4G and, and just anywhere worldwide. And so if you, if you, if you download BusyWig and you install it, uh, try to be the first to sign up because we're only going to be able to allow a uh, you know, very few limited number of uh, people to beta test this, but it does work. Uh, you just hit the sign up button and you very send cool. a request and uh, and, and we'll and we'll hopefully try and get some of you guys into that to try that out. Yeah. It also comes in handy when you're maybe at a concert where there's no Wi-Fi, and you might be standing right next to your friend, uh, and you could use worldwide remote camera um, over 4G that way as well okay. for our servers. We'll have to try that out yeah, with some definitely. of the viewers. Now, what so, was your second question? Okay, the second question. It's great to have a lot of of uh, cameras. But audio is also really important. Yes. So if, let's say, I were to go somewhere, let's say we had Dave, our producer, uh, take a little mixer and have some high-quality mics, and he was sitting there with an iPad, um, and, and we piped the mixer into the audio on the, uh, on the iPad he's mm -hmm. using as the stage, could we just use the audio from that combined with the cameras from everywhere else? Yes, in fact, that's, that's why we designed it the way we did. You can, you can go into the, um, uh, that, that session that we did a little earlier. Um, I'll, I'll show you real quick. So to answer your question, yes, you can use audio from one source that is the mixer. And I'll show you that here real quick. 
Okay, so you know, you know on the um, edit screen that we showed a little earlier where we were changing the live switching? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so there's a, there's a button on there where you can change the um, camera that you want to use for the audio. And okay. what we do is, we, is that there can be a camera that you don't use the video from it at all. And so typically we'll use maybe an iPad or something and we'll plug a mixer into that and we'll record audio and we won't ever switch to that device when we're doing the live switching. Hmm. But when we go to edit the switching session, we'll choose that device as the master audio. You could also use an iRig handheld right. mic. You could stick your iPhone in your pocket and you could stand there with a mic yeah. in your hand and do the exact same thing. Exactly. That'd be awesome. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, the other thing I do, I've, I've actually got a, a Nikon um, D800E here, which has got a really nice uh, quality video, and I've got a, a wide-angle lens on it. I've got a, um, I have a, you can see it here, I've got an iFi card in it. Yeah. Okay. And then I have the iFi app on my iPhone. And what I do is I, is I shoot with this, and then I use the iFi app to get these these uh, video clips right into my iPhone, oh, and then nice. I just load those clips into my yeah. timeline. Awesome, oh, that yeah. Is, that is actually That's really a great good. idea. Yeah. That's cool. So that's, that's a nice quick workaround. You know, if okay. you want to use a Nikon D800 or a, ca a Canon, uh, so anything that shoots onto a... Uh, an iFi. An yeah. iFi card. Um, those iFi cards are pretty fast. They feed it right into your camera roll, and then we just load those clips right into the timeline and mix that footage in and... And, uh, but yeah, with the remote microphone stuff, uh, it's, it's really pretty impressive. The, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is, we haven't really told anybody about this, John. This is what I, was alert, I was telling you a little bit about it earlier. But we've perfected something called facial switching. And the reason we developed this is when you're by yourself, let's say you're a CNNI reporter, and you want to have two or three cameras, uh, and you want to switch between them, you really need, you know, extra people, right? You might need an audio guy. You might need someone to do switching. But we wanted to be able to allow a CNNI reporter to do a live news broadcast, not a nude broadcast. We wanted to do a live <laughs> news broadcast um, alone uh, with three cameras, uh, holding one in their hand, maybe an iRig microphone. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is look at each camera, uh, change their gaze, change their, change their direction of focus to each camera, and our live switching software will automatically switch to the camera that they're looking at based on facial recognition. <laughs> uh, we actually filed patents on this uh, last year, and we believe we're the first ones to ever achieve it on any platform. Wow. I don't that even think amazing. broadcast studios that uh, do is facial awesome. switching. It's like we wouldn't have to uh, rely on Dave Curley to switch our tally lights between each camera. We get to choose. We wouldn't need any of the Daves. No. Hmm. Huh. This could save us a lot of money. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> wow, that is very, very cool. I can't. So, so when do we get to? It's here. We've got oh, it installed. It is We're going to put it installed. There's actually, a, and I'll, I'll show you how to get to it. But if you go to the multi camera, um, uh, there's a, a pop up when you're when you're set as the stage. Um, there's a little button. Okay. You tap the little plus menu that says auto switching mode. And see down there at the bottom, it says auto switching ah, mode. I see. OK. If you tap that, uh, you set up three or four cameras, point it yourself. Um, you just look in each camera, and you'll see on the stage, you'll see it switch to that camera. You hit record, and you just start. I mean, it's really fun. I, I'll put cameras like around my house, and I'll just run around and and look at each camera and it'll automatically switch. And then when I'm done, I have a little video of me running around my house looking at different cameras. It's kind of funny. That so you, really you turn cool. on the auto switching mode uh -huh. from the stage? Yes, it has to be yes. the stage. OK, all right, I got gotcha. you. This brings up another point is, is we have this thing called request remote clip and download remote clip. So in addition to utilizing your friend's cameras for, for live footage, you can also download clips from each other's camera rolls and request clips. So maybe you've shot something with your native camera app or your friend has, and they want to quickly send that over to your device. Um, this is a real quick, easy way to, to grab those files from, from everybody's devices and put them into your movie. All right. 
Well, we well, got we to gotta wrap it up, but yes, I will tell you what, lots guys. Lots of packed in good information. I'm playing with it here. I was playing with it before we got on, before we started doing the live show earlier, and we really wanted to get Michael on because, obviously, he, as you can tell, he knows everything about it. He's <laughs> not just one of those CEOs that stands there and looks pretty. He actually <laughs> knows what he's talking about. So he's giving us this tour. We can spend the next three hours with this, but what I want to tell you is, I've got it running yeah. right here. It is awesome. It is really easy to use. Before he ever even told us how to work it, I had already set it up on yeah. an iPod Touch, an iPad Mini, and, and a full-size iPad. iPad, and I was switching between them with zero instruction. That's how easy it was to use. Very cool. So, and so it's 20 bucks on, on iOS store, so just head on over to the iTunes store. Well, well worth, worth it. Well worth it. I mean, well I, I saw it. people in the chat room saying they'd pay 99 bucks for it. I know. You know? <laughs> so. you guys are, and if anyone wants to email us, it's iPhone at iForSoftware.com. We respond very quickly to support emails. That's we take great. support very, very seriously, probably more seriously than any developer I'm aware of. That's great. And we will help you solve any problem that you might have very quickly, even on Saturdays and Sundays, nights and, and uh, early mornings, we try to get back to people very quickly because, you know, if someone's trying to do a multi-camera shoot, they, they need some help. Yeah, and yeah. we want to make sure we help them. Well, well thank you go so, ahead. Much, so much, Michael. Guys. We really appreciate your time. I know you're busy making more awesome stuff that we can't <laughs> even talk about right now. So, <laughs> And everybody can head on over to, what, what's the website? i4software.com. Well, it's, it's busywave.com. Yeah. Oh, or, or go to busywave. That's what I thought. Okay. If you go to i4software.com, you can see, you see all, the, all other the other apps, ones. too. Okay. All, all right, right, guys. Thanks, Michael. Bye. Thank you guys Thank you. so much Thanks for so much. joining Bye. us. And uh, we will see you more over at geekbeat.tv. Yep. Later, guys. Bye.